a lot of times our families come in and they're just conscientious of getting the heart adequately diagnosed. And what happens is once they're evaluated by our team, by our group of physicians and the nurse coordinator, they're, they're given a little bit more information and they're strongly encouraged to have other testing done. And that might be an amniocentesis with a, uh, a full genetic workup for 22Q deletion. They might have a fetal MRI. They might have a more in involved uh, fetal ultrasound. Tetralogy fallosa is a relatively common form of congenital heart disease, and it can be associated with other forms of uh, congenital abnormalities. At this point, specifically, what we know about the genetic basis of tetralogy fallot is that about 7% um, of those children will have trisomy 21. So they have a complete extra copy of a chromosome 21. Um, we also know that about 15% of those children will be missing a piece of chromosome 22, now called the 22Q11 deletion syndrome. This abnormality can result in the presence of tetralogy fallot and it can also result in some uh, other types of anomalies, including cleft lip or palate, um, abnormalities of speech or phonation, uh, and in some patients, even uh, development of learning differences or learning difficulties. So you can see that the genetic basis of these disorders can encompass either a complete change in chromosome number, like having a complete extra copy of a chromosome. It can be a missing part or a duplicated part, extra part of a chromosome, or it can be a small change in a specific and single gene. It's one thing for us to say we can fix the heart, but it's another thing to say, sure, we fixed the heart, but there's all these other questions that remain to be answered. We treat tetralogy fallot uh, in the same way in uh, these patients that have these various other associated anomalies, but certainly uh, it, it places things in a little bit of a different context. Some of the patients who have these associated anomalies may require uh, additional care and intervention in the intensive care unit. There might be a need for a bit more attention or perhaps a bit of a longer stay uh, when these children undergo these, these various surgeries. So it's important to know if there's other anomalies because we, it, it gives a more comprehensive picture to the parents of what this baby's gonna behave like postnatally. Babies with Tetralogy of Fallot often do extremely well after birth. Most can safely deliver uh, through a vaginal means. Uh, when delivered, however, and when separated from the placenta, no longer receiving oxygenated blood from the mother, we now place the task of oxygenation upon the lungs uh, of the newborn. If they have enough blood flow uh, at the time of birth so that they don't need an urgent operation, we'll have an elective operation somewhere between two and six months of, of life. And those babies are just like any other baby. They, the issues really are feeding and growing. Because technically for the surgeon, they could do it when the baby's first born is really no different than doing it when the baby's three months of age. It's just for us taking care of the baby in the ICU, your hospitalization's much shorter. If you've already been at home, you've learned how to eat, you've gone through that newborn period, then if you come back when you're three to four months of age for surgery, your recovery time in the hospital is very short as compared to if you're a newborn. Nowadays, because surgery has developed so much, we can repair this heart defect very routinely somewhere between two and four months of age. So that's when we now electively repair Tetralogy of Fallot. In patients with a big VSD with serious overriding of the aorta and seriously stenotic pulmonary valve, we know that unfortunately that patient isn't going to have the, the liberty of waiting for like say a repair at three to six months. For many children, uh, with complex heart disease, there's blockage of the blood either going to the, to the body or to the lungs. And there's a blood vessel called the ductus arteriosus which connects those two arteries. Everybody has one and it usually closes after birth. You can keep that blood vessel open with a medication called prostaglandins. And so therefore by giving a baby prostaglandins you're actually replicating the same physiology that it had in the uterus when it was very stable to when it's outside the uterus. About half of the children who are born with Tetralogy of Fallot have a more complicated form of Tetralogy where not only is there a hole between the two pumping chambers of the heart and not only is there a narrowing going out to the lungs but actually there's no connection at all between the heart and the blood vessels in the lungs. 
and that's called tetralgia fallow with pulmonary atresia. Obviously, if we know there's a complete blockage or pulmonary atresia, we know the baby will, will not have uh, blood flow to the lungs after birth if the ductus closes. So we have to initiate prostaglandin therapy to keep the ductus open. When the ductus arteriosus remains open, that can provide an additional source of blood flow uh, to the lung and therefore allow a period of stability and adequate oxygenation until the baby makes its way to uh, surgery. Sometimes they're born with a diagnosis where we're not sure if they're going to need surgery in the newborn period. And so those babies are often started on a prostaglandin medication in the delivery room, which st stabilizes the baby so that if there's any problems, they won't occur uh, in the delivery room. And we bring the baby to the ICU and we stop the prostaglandins and we let the baby transition to being a baby um, separate from being in the uterus and we watch very carefully and see how the child does. And for some of those children, they need the prostaglandins restarted because in fact they do need to have their surgery before they go home. And for other children, they're actually okay and they can go home and come back at a later date. So not every baby who has a prenatal diagnosis of Tetralogy of Fallot will need an immediate urgent operation. If possible, if they have adequate pulmonary blood flow, we'll let them, we'd like to let them grow for a couple months before they have the surgery. So they'll, they would be born, they would come to the cardiac intensive care unit, they would have an echo to confirm the diagnosis, we would watch them to, do, to be sure that they had enough blood flow to the lungs, then let them start to eat and hopefully go home and come back for an elective operation at uh, two to three months of age.